Nine personnel changes from the England game. What was the thinking behind that? Yeah, really, it's um, looking at each game uh, on its merits. And for us, we want to keep giving guys uh, opportunities. Um, I think we've had probably eight guys have starts now. Uh, sorry, eight debutants who have had a, a second opportunity across the competition. I think uh, just about everyone in the squad's now had a couple of opportunities. Um, it's a tournament, we said from the outset, where we, uh, we want to build some depth. And um, we're continuing to do, <coughs> continuing to do so. And uh, also, we think we put out a side that uh, can get a result. And that was part of the uh, what I laid down um, to the, the other coaches when we selected the side. We've got to select a side that we believe can get a result and also uh, uh, still um, build depth. So that was the, uh, the two criteria. George North has gone back to the Ospreys for a couple of games or one game in the end. He played on the wing. You've named him an outside centre. What, what was the thinking behind that? Yeah, well, at the outset, I think against Italy in the in the first game of the Six Nations, we played him there um, with Jonathan Davies. Uh, we know he's had a few injuries over the last few years, and really, it's looking at um, who's going to be in behind Jonathan and, and be able to take that role when he's not there. And uh, so Nick's had an opportunity, um, and now George gets a, a second go at it. And uh, this is the time we believe to ask the questions and get the answers. And the halfbacks, lots of inexperienced halfbacks, but a second start for. Um, uh, Kieran Hardy and Callum Sheedy. Uh, what, what was, why, why have they been given another chance? And also, does that mean anything for like Dan Bigger and Reese Webb who aren't involved in the match day 23? Well, I think uh, we know what Dan can and can't do, and I think he played uh, pretty well against England. So the Georgian game and this game was uh, always going to be one where we continued the sort of trend of, of giving guys opportunity and, and learning more about them. Um, you know, if you look through to the World Cup, 2023, we're going to look at uh, you know who, who's going to be there potentially in the future, and, and we'd like those guys to have 20, 30 tests under the belt by the time they do that. So at some stage, you've got to take the field, and um, we believe uh, Callum went well against Georgia, and this this will be a step up from Georgia, and uh, so we'll get some more questions answered. As you stand now, Wayne, do you think this is your strongest side, or are you still looking at different positions? Well, I think we've got a number of players unavailable um, through injury, so you know, factor that in, then, uh, then it's probably not the strongest side possible uh, when everybody's fit and available. But uh, when, uh, when is everyone fit and available? You know, sometimes uh, you've got a, a great squad on paper, but you don't get them fit and available. And those are the key words at the same time. So, look, for us, it's um, putting out a side, as I say, that we're excited to see go out. Um, there are some guys there that, uh, and Sam Parry, you know, gets a first start. So he's excited and see him in training today. Look, I think um, these boys will, will equip themselves very well. Um, and as I say, it's, we're just continuing uh, the theme from the start of the competition. We're learning a lot about the players. Uh, and when it comes time to sit down and name the Six Nations squad, we'll be in, a, be in a better position to put out what we believe is the strongest squad possible. So Josh Navidi hasn't played at all. How concerning should that be, given it was a, a concussion injury? Yeah, that's that's one that's very disappointing, mainly for Josh. You know, he he's he's very disappointed because he's come through and he's been able to train for the last three weeks. It's just really been in the latter part of the week, the accumulation of the trainings, where he's just felt uh, not quite himself, not a hundred percent, and so we haven't risked uh, taking him to that last stage of of going through the full contact. So, look, he's. Um, <sighs> He'll go back to club rugby and uh, hopefully he'll get cleared to play and uh, in the next week or two and we'll see him back on the field. But yeah, he's disappointed and we're disappointed that he hasn't got out there, obviously. And final one for me, Wayne, it's the last game of the year. How important is a win in this match and a good win? Yeah, look, for us, it's very important. We've talked about that today and, and uh, that's what we want to do. You know, it's, it's time for us to, to uh, keep improving in our defence, but also uh, nail the opportunities which come our way in the attacking side of the game, which we know we haven't done to, to this point and it's certainly going to be a big focus point for, uh, or was for today and will be again tomorrow. Just looking at the team, you've got a lot of pace in the back three. You've got a very mobile pack. You've got two or three guys that were real ability over the ball. In a way, is this the type of selection, you know, with the halfbacks as well, which perhaps is the most geared yet to the way you want to move Wales forward? Yeah, I think there's, there's a bit of a hint there, but, um, you know, and we'll look at the players that were unavailable, like the Moriarty's and the, and the um, Navidis, so, and amongst others, the Ken Owens and other boys. So, look, I think, it, you know, we've learned a lot from this campaign. I think, with guys coming back from injury for Six Nations, 
know, I think we can put out a pretty strong side and, uh, you know, we're taking a little bit of pain early on and uh, I think we're slowly improving. And, um, you know, from our point of view internally in the camp, there's certainly uh, there's a lot of vim and vigour about the place and, uh, you know, I wouldn't be at all surprised if we um, have a very good outing on the weekend. Looking at James Botham, you've moved him back now across to six. We talked about that last time where you saw him there. I mean, his tackle count for the Blues and for yourself has been very high. Are you almost edging towards him as a six option now? So you've got him and Shane Lewis there together for that role. No, look, I think he's one that at his age has the ability to play in all three back row positions. Um, and it's a bit like having Navs out there with uh, with Justin. So very sort of similar. Both guys are potentially very good over the ball. Um, they can both run with the ball and they both uh, have high work rates and, and are pretty good defensively. So, you know, he's a young one that, again, um, like Shane Lewis uses, getting opportunities. And, and I think that uh, he has a big future in the game. Lastly for me, Wayne, obviously the set piece has been a talking point. What have you been thinking about and what are you looking to to do in a way to try and give yourself more of a platform there this weekend? Uh, we're speaking to the referees and uh, uh, we'll have a meeting with uh, with Wayne Barnes and uh, get his view of the world. But um, certainly we're not going to panic because we thought that uh, it was a very good performance against Georgia in the set piece. And I think uh, if you look at some of those penalties in the game against England, uh, we would argue uh, some of the penalties could have gone the other way. So on another day, we would come away from that game not thinking we were, we were that bad. So, you know, we, we're going to stick to what we've been doing, and that is um, trying to paint good pictures for the referees and uh, trying to get a set piece where we can get the ball away and play. But uh, it hasn't happened a lot. We haven't been able to attack from scrums. So it's been a bit frustrating. But, um, you know, from our point of view internally, uh, we don't think we've always had the rub of the green, but it's something we've just got to keep working at and uh, make sure we present the best uh, best pictures possible. You're trying to bring in a, an attacking philosophy at a time when everybody's struggling to attack and everybody's kicking an awful lot. How worried are you that that does seem to be the trend and what would you like to see change to maybe reverse it and encourage uh, more attacking rugby? Well, I've got an idea on what I would do, but um, those sorts of discussions, uh, you know, we, we put ideas forward um, to the people that make the calls. But certainly at the moment, I think everybody would agree that it's not the prettiest rugby we're, we're seeing at the moment. And um, we, we certainly would like to uh, use the ball a bit more. But for us, it's, it's, it's not just around the kicking side of the game. It's making sure that we control what we're doing with the ball when we've got it. And we haven't been that clinical. So we can improve in that area, we know. But I think um, at the moment, the way the game's being played uh, is very defence orientated and uh, there's no encouragement not to do what a lot of teams are doing and they're getting results from it. So, But I think sooner or later, um, pressure will come on to, to look at changes so that uh, uh, teams are encouraged to attack a bit more.